Hello everybody, welcome back to Zero Tolerance TV. We've got game two, the group B, I guess, here. Not actually sure which number this is, but it's the second group, so probably group B. It's gonna be a pretty spicy one, actually. Two players who you've probably heard of. We've got Nara and Yellow. This is the first Nalrock game I'll be casting on the channel, but Yellow, I've casted a few games for, before. Although these would have play, been played before those games. The other ones were from the 2006 Shinhan Bank OSL, I think it was called. Uh, what? Sin Gamma Goen, or something like Ga Gamma Goen? I don't know. It's a, it's a weird map name. I know I've definitely cast a game on it before. I can't remember exactly what it looks like. So, yeah, there you go. Got three different colors for the names over there. <laughs> because reasons, okay? So, Nalra is going to be in the red and yellow teal. So, just based on the colors, I, I mean, I hope Nalra wins because if you're going to be yellow, you have to play yellow. Like, what the fuck, dude? Come on, get it together. <sighs> Unbelievable. <laughs> so that was Nalra in the bottom right, Spawn and Yellow over in the bottom left. I don't think I've seen a cross map Spawn in a while on like any map. This could be a three Spawn map though. Can't remember what it looks like. Hopefully we get a little map preview. Often we do. Here it is. Okay, this is a four spawn map. Um, looks pretty normal. Oh, sure, this is the uh, kind of odd place for the third. It's, it's sort of behind the natural on a high ground. Um, the map, I guess, in here. I think someone put vultures behind, like at the third high ground location and was harassing the natural, um, and then I think they put tanks there later in the game as well, so that was good fun, just some Terran things. So it looks like an ant, that's what I'd say they're drawing in the middle of the map, so this is probably, this planet's probably home to a race of very large ants, that's my guess. That's my translation. <laughs> so it looks like sure uh pretty cheeky scout there from Nara. by cheeky i mean clever um checking the closest spawn where um oh my God, yellow there we go actually is obviously would be faster but checking cross map means you get to look for an overlord you're, you're more likely to see the Overlord, because if you go to the closest spawn, there's only you're, you'll only see an Overlord if they're cross-map and they scouted down. But if you scout cross-map first, like Nara did, you have the potential to see an Overlord from either of the closest spawns. So I think scouting there first is... It, it, it gives you the best chance of figuring out where they are immediately. Um, so I think that's why he did it. And it seems like there's not a huge penalty for cross-map scouting. First on this map, it's not a huge map, just based on the size of the vision bubble from the probe. It's kind of a smaller map. So... Kind of a cool little scouting pattern from Nalra. Obviously, it can backfire if they just send their probe in a different direction. Oh, this is one base Stargate, by the way. Um, but if they just send their probe in a different direction, sorry, their overlord, uh, you just get no info, and then potentially you could last spawn scout them after cross map scouting, which is pretty bad. But not what happened. Now Ra was paid off for his scouting patterns. Pretty nice there for him. And now he's looks like he has the info he needs to hold this. Two zealots on a ramp will kill a ton of zerglings, especially if they're microed well. So we'll have to see 
what sort of commitment Yellow is going with on this. Uh, okay, I like that move. He tried to uh, glitch these zealots with his drone. I think the idea there is you mineral rot walk with the drone and then stop position it while it's on top of the zealots and they'll probably move. But Naura reacted really well and just killed the drone right away. So Yellow's move didn't really get anything done there. Yellow, I think, is just now starting his first uh, expansion and has a Hydra Den already. So it looks like he's probably just going to all in here. This one cannon is not in a horrible position uh, for links, but it's not going to do too much against something like Hydra's on the low ground shooting the uh, zealots in that wall with some overlord vision. Uh, they could definitely get some good damage there. First overlord picked off by uh, Nara's first courser, and now he is going to go start scouting, see what's up. What's up, crowd? Lux luxury. Kang Min. No idea who that is. Probably one of these players. Kang Min. Yeah, I don't know. I know Min is a very common Korean name. Uh, I think that's usually a last name. But I don't know. <laughs> don't pretend to be any sort of expert on Korean names. Third Zealot pops out. Pretty well defended ramp there. And I don't know, it seems like yellow might not be doing a big attack here. I'm not exactly sure what the plan is from him. Now, Dragoon is going to actually do a terrible job blocking the ramp because all three Zerglings are going to make it into his main. Pretty surprising. The cannon does end up picking one off, but kind of painful. Uh, really, the big deal here, obviously, he's not going to get any actual you know, drone or worker damage, but a full scout. And he is well aware that this is a Reaver build, seeing the robotic support bay. Let's see what these three zealots can do. Looks like they're going to get. Well, that was a Hydra they just killed. And fighting these Lings, doing a pretty good job. Actually killing them off, and not a single zealot dead so far. Corsair is also here hitting these overlords. It's like he's trying to use the overlords to micro under, but it really honestly didn't work that well. These three zealots are getting a ton of damage done, still none of them dead. The Sunken Colony finally finishes, but that does not do anything to stop this Corsair from continuing to kill overlords. So the zealots are going to get picked off now, but I would say they definitely did their job. Third Overlord being attacked now by that Corsair. And Naura actually gets a good scout off with that last Zealot, so that was a pretty strong Zealot pressure. Still nothing stopping this Corsair from doing damage, and Zerglings, quite a few Zerglings being made here. <clears throat> I'm a bit surprised, but I guess there's no good Zerg tech against Reaver this early. Uh, Mutas would be good. That's the sort of thing that can do quite well, or just picking off the shuttle with Scourge can be quite strong. But Zerglings get killed really hard by Reavers. Uh, they are in the base now, though. Three goons, not exactly a great fighting force against a pack of Zerglings like this. Gonna need to try to bait them over to the cannons. That's what really is gonna do the damage, but Reaver is here in the main, starting to kill off some of these workers. Already has four kills and could get a huge shot there. Uh, only two more with that one. It could have actually been a lot better. Obviously, getting two workers for one Scarab is still a great trade. Looks like these lanes are actually going to take out the support bay. Kind of painful for Nara. It has done its main job, which is produce the first Reaver. Definitely the most important Reaver. Uh, but obviously, you don't want to be losing your tech. It would still be good later in the game. Dragoons and a Zealot come over here, clean up the wings pretty efficiently, so mainly just trading them for that support bay. Kind of, I don't know, I guess that's probably a, a fine trade for yellow. Lings aren't that good against Reavers anyway, so trading them off to limit the supply of Reavers is probably good, but that was a decent number of links. Of course, they're still harassing these overloads in the natural. Five kills, so the thing has killed five overloads already. Definitely worth its weight 
in Overlords. Hydras are going to push it away before it gets a sixth kill. Still going to be scouting. Oh, Hydra walks out and gets killed by the Dragoons. And here we go. The Reaver is actually here to bust the Sunk. Pretty impactful. This one Reaver. Did he rebuild his support bay? I think actually Nara rebuilt his support bay. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't think he would do that, but... Um, obviously, this Reaver is doing a pretty good amount of damage. First one being quite good, but this attack might actually kill off his units. Oh, but look at this Reaver, man. It's just killing so much. Gonna get a huge shot on those lings there and does blow up a bunch of them. The Reaver does finally go down, but look at all this Protoss that's left in the natural. Not much here to fight it for yellow. Some lings rallying out, so I do think he'll be able to clean this up eventually here. More units rallying up. This is three gate production. Oh my god, is Nara actually going to win this fight? I mean, he's still going to trade a bunch of goons for these lings, so ultimately not a great trade for him, but he might be able to actually save some of them. Zerlings, like six left right now. Two Dragoons trying to run away. Really, the damage was dealt on drones, though. The Reaver did quite a good job. Uh, wow. You know, I gotta say, Yellow is very uh, fortunate to have been able to kill off that Reaver. If it were still alive, it would have killed all these Lings, and honestly, this attack would just still be going on. So, being able to pick that off was a huge deal. Nalra has produced another Reaver now. Probably going to be reattacking with it. Honestly, at this point, he could go into a macro game, though. Yellow's economy is not strong at all. He doesn't have even that great of tech. He is up to lair, but I don't think he's actually got any lair tech to use with it, so kind of just a sad lair at this moment. He needs to get a spire or lurker aspect or something to take advantage of it. Probably lurker aspect. I'm not sure that he can really afford the spire tech quite yet. He does go Spire, probably be for just some Scourge. Uh, but this isn't even like a... Well, yeah, I guess the Scourge would be good for fighting the uh, Dropship for the Reaver. But not really going to do much else. The Corsairs did not get uh, mass-produced. Often that Spire into Hydra sort of game plan is because your opponent is quite heavily into Corsairs. There we go. Nara is attacking. The Sunk was not remade and two Reavers now. Patry goes down right away. <laughs> I think those were some Yellow fans. Okay, Yellow actually has snuck a few Hydras behind this through the third area. Let me just see what his plan is with that. Those. Still no range, or speed, excuse me, and that is actually a very important upgrade for fighting something like Reavers. You know, if you're going to be fighting AoE units anyway, you better get on them quickly with your Hydras. So we do have a situation where it's one base against one base now. I think that would favor Nara, especially after all the drone damage he's done. A pretty large army here for Yellow. Again, though, I mean, two Reavers? Like, I played Zerg in the campaign enough to know that Zerglings do not do well against Reavers. <laughs> I'm sure we've all, we've all felt that moment of, you know, I have a shit ton of Zerglings. Okay, I'm in moving into Protoss space on the campaign, and they just all die to two Reavers. So, <laughs> it's, it's not quite enough, I think, what Yellow has to kill those Reavers. He is going around this army, though. I think a counterattack might be his best option. It's a pretty sizable force. Maybe gonna try for a surround? That might work. I don't think that Nara has scouted that yet. Third Reaver here now. That is a scary army. <laughs> Very good tech. Their base also going to be finishing for Nalra pretty soon. I'd like to see him take that gas at his natural. Maybe get into some Templar tech. Uh, Reavers are good and all, but they do have some weaknesses in the matchup. Uh, one being, you know, the shuttle. 
if it gets picked off with the Reavers in it or without them in it, it can be pretty damaging to Protoss' plan, especially with the Reavers in it. Um, but a big part of protecting your Reavers is that shuttle, so I do think you want to eventually be in more than just Reaver tech. That said, yeah, Nara is moving into Yellow's main here, so it might just not matter. He might just be ending the game right now. This hatch is definitely going to die. The Reavers are unloaded. Looks like he is going to be counterattacking with this army, so Yellow kind of agrees with me in that this is not going to be a great attack. Cannon here is going to be pretty great. Two cannons, actually, on the lower ground to fight these Langs. Now, this is a ton of Langs, so they will be able to push these cannons. Not Cracklings, though, so they're not going to kill them as fastly, or as quickly, fastly, as you might be expecting. But, I mean, even if Yellow manages to kill that natural, Nara's just in his main. Like, he's going to lose his lair. He's already lost a bunch of these drones. He's probably just going to lose the rest of them. And if those two, you know, two or, or, or all three Reavers even come back, he's going to be able to defend this. And this is, yeah, case in point, look at these... Reavers just destroying Yellow's army, and there we go, GG called. Pretty nice game there from Nalra. I like the the Reaver attack. That was pretty effective, and uh, especially after Yellow was kind of aggressive early, maybe he really wanted to get some damage done with that first Ling attack and his little drone trick. Kind of unfortunate for him that it didn't work out, and he wasn't able to glitch the Zealots out of position. But, uh, yeah. They also just kind of let a Corsair kill five overlords. <laughs> Which is pretty bad. Oh, and that Zealot attack, that's right. Those three Zealots got so much damage done. Kind of a crazy game. Well, I hope you enjoyed as much as I did, and I hope you tune in for the next one.